with Sean McCann. Greetings. Welcome to Wake the Dead. Today we are delighted to have first time guest Laura Worley. Hello, Laura. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. You, uh, you have some information that we desperately need in our ears. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming that there's not only regular listeners there, I'm assuming that we are also reaching survivors uh, of a SRA, MKUltra type programming. I've had, uh, we've had Carrie Olahe as a guest who, uh, on one of the episodes, she, she discussed her New World Order program, where mm -hmm. she was uh, trained to be a hunter tracker she called mm -hmm. it, for the people who get loose from the cities, who run away from the New World Order system. She uh, was trained to uh, act like a wounded bird, and then they take her into the whatever um, camp or whatnot. And she was trained to, if there was three people, three men, then she was just to kill them in their sleep. And if there was more than that, then she was to, uh, well, no, kill them in their sleep if there's more than three. Uh, and then take the children back to the, to the cult so that they can be programmed. And this is like for the time when they expected to have New World Order already in effect by now. Like her termination, she's 35, and her termination was like already up. You know, she was supposed to have been after a hunter tracker. She was going to be this queen of re some region, like some area where she and some male would rule like king and queen, basically, for some local area. It was really interesting. And we learned a lot from her. Okay. Um, and we've also had Nathan Reynolds, who is a bloodline family uh he uh, escaped his uh, programming, and these, and we've also we've we've talked a lot about uh, you know Fritz Springmeier's work and that type of thing. And with Fritz Springmeier, there is um, you know he gets into the different types of programming where uh, we there is uh, you know Alice in Wonderland and aliens and you know they get all these different. That's the front programming. That's actually right. not the true core programming. Yes, that's why we need you here today to teach us about this. Uh, it is very interesting what you what you have to say, and um, it's occulted within the victims. They don't know it's there, much right. like the other programming that they've had all this time, and they may think they're free, but there may be something residual underneath and uh yeah. yeah so you've worked to bring this information to people to help them to understand what the programming is and uh i'm so glad you're here to join us and my me and my listeners today to explain this fully well how i learned this is i spent like 20 some years uh being a survivor trying to get help and i ended up finding a specialist that cost a lot of money and this was in 2005. And all we did was work on the front programming. And what ended up happening is that front pro programming did nothing. So when they wanted to call me back for when Hillary Clinton was going to be president, they, they called- The cult, not yeah, your doctors, yes, right? The, okay, if you wanna say the, the Illuminati, cult. whoever, right. uh, they all, they started calling back all of the survivors to be updated because they were going to take over. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And so the new world order is what people need to understand is every single survivor has the new world order programming. Every single survivor has, is a soldier. They have sleeper soldiers because the army was the main reason that all survivors 
really were programmed is because they needed an army to do their bidding. And so right now, everybody, there is different levels of be people being called back. I do need to share though, they don't let you go at 30 or 35. Huh. Uh, that's a that's a misconception. Uh, the brain of, grows to a different, after 28, the brain is uh, more developed. It's fully adult at that point. So that's mm -hmm. why the memories come up, right? Yes. At the Yeah. Getting around that age, 30 and up, your mind, your subconscious doesn't have the same ability of the walls that they've built to keep the secrets. Um, but they have come up with technology that is wiping people's memory in different ways that they didn't have, like when I was really growing up. Um, so you have to understand right now, I would say most people don't realize that they are not free because they don't have they don't address certain things. And if you don't address what I call the tree of death, uh, with its whole system, it's not just a tree, but it, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the, they, they worship the Kabbalah. And it goes back a thousand years that they have been dealing and creating a way of worshiping the false gods which are de demons that we have all worshipped like so cute, like Zeus and, um, you know, Diana and all those people. We kind of said, oh, they're so fun. They're so cute. Those are the demon gods that they worship. So we have been worshiping a demon god by just going to a movie that thinks is so cute, like Thor. So because uh, I was like Thor movies. But that's and, and they they worship fallen angels. So how they get instructed is by the fallen angels. They they direct them. They give them how to do this. They tell the military what to do. So what they did is they created a very structured uh, template of that would take over a person's mind their body, their spirit, and capture in a spiritual form uh, everything about them. And what they did is they built this very complex tree of death. And I go through in my book uh, what that means to a survivor. What my goal is, is I want every single person on this planet to understand that they they put in a template. That means every single survivor has the exact same thing. And if you can understand, there is no way that they could put millions of people worldwide under this mind control, you know, have a new world order army, unless it was very organized and it was the same. So they have to know, like if a person comes in and they're like, let's say eight years old, they have to know what programming that has been done, where they're at in their programming. So anybody can take over to, to finish the programming. So by 17, the programming, I consider it high school, You've, you've learned, you have done everything they want you to create by 17. And then there's two more years that you need to finish, which is like college, and you will do the rest. So it's, it is very important for people to understand that what we're dealing with is something that is in every survivor. You know, people come forward and they say, well, I have this, I have that. That's true, but so does everyone else. That's what people don't understand. Everybody has the New World Order Army and every survivor is a soldier. They have soldier parts, that it's a very complex program uh, that's been taught to them since they were a little child. So probably around two, they start the training. So right. by 17, you know, you you know all the martial arts, languages, how to kill, how to hunt, how to be hunted. All of that is being done to every survivor. There's not a wow. single survivor that is not a soldier. Well, the two survivors that I spoke to were were super soldiers. Uh, Nathan killed with knives, and you know mm -hmm. they they made him so angry. Yeah. And all they had to do was just show him a picture and say, "This dude hurts children," and he's like a like you know wants to kill their throats. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It's it's so perfectly created within them that it uses their own impulses their own urges uh yes and if you think about it, satanism 
in general, I guess, the Church of Satan, they uh, they say that that's like they want to be more human-like, animal-like, and instead of spirit, they want to be body, you know, and so they have this rule of the predators type mindset. Um, but you, you mentioned how the Kabbalah is ancient, mm -hmm. thousand years, it's even older. Like I'm looking into that, it's they, the Jews took it from Babylon and mm -hmm. Babylon, I think had it even before that. It actually started like what, how this all started, at least to my knowledge, I'm only studying it. I mean, there's so much to study if you're studying this, you know, yes. that. but, yes. um, so they did. So it was basically after Christ died, they didn't want to believe in the New Testament. So they kind of started the Talmud and a couple other things. And then that's how it grew into the Kabbalah. I think they said it's about a thousand AD that, that the actual practice of the demonology, I guess, that they had kind of created started. Right. So right. yeah, this is stuff is, is from the beginning of time. But what you, what you must understand is the demons, the fallen angels are the ancient demons from the beginning of time that are instructing them how to create the system inside of a person because it will make a person a mind control slave. I even believe they had this uh, during Egypt time. I really do. Right. Because it's the same demons teaching, you know. So what people don't understand, this is my biggest calling. It really is to get this out is because I can speak from my own experience. I spent so much money and so many years and all we did was deal with like the Disney crap and all that kind of stuff. Guess what? It got me nowhere because they were able to call me back in two seconds because I had the New World Order programming and I had the, the Tree of Death programming. I never touched any of that or what I call the water world. It's the Atlantis. So these are like the really big things that intertwine everything. Everything's connected. And then the programmers, they love to play with your mind. So they that's where the Disney stuff comes in because right. it's the easiest way to teach a child you know, through a Disney cartoon, they can teach them the programming. Right. But that isn't the, that's not the spiritual programming. That's the top. It's what they intertwine with the, the true spiritual programming is Lucifer's kingdom, which is layered in every single program they put is one step at a time, one age at a time. That's how they do it. Right. But they layer it in with demons, with fallen angels, and sometimes Nephilim. Okay. So, so yeah. wait, that, that, I'm sorry. That's important. Um, so the 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 tree of life is like is one of the most integral pieces of Western magic. Like you saw in the tarot deck, it's like it's everywhere. Well, I th I would clarify the tree of death is actually I, yeah, God's. Yeah. Right. I was gonna flip. I was gonna talk oh, about. Okay. That. Go ahead. Okay. You, if you want to say, go ahead. You, no, you can't. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So the tree of life is like is. Um, I mean, we've talked to ex OTO members and, um, you know, that, that gentleman, he relates everything that he sees to the Kabbalah. And I'm like, Whoa, why is he, you know, that's just how he sees something and boom, he puts it into that context. Right. And we have a very good friend of the show. Dr. Hans Utter has done a continual series with me about the Klepoth which is the name of the tree of death. And it's spelled in different ways. Uh, you can spell it with a K, with a Q. Uh, I mean, uh, anyway, it's basically the inversion of the tree of life. And mm -hmm. we discovered from our investigate from Hans it taught us that, um, that it's really the same tree, but it's like a mirrored, it's like a mirrored version of it. Right. And so Malkuth is the lowest end of the tree of life, mm -hmm. but that is the entry doorway to the tree of death. And Lilith is L Lilith is the master of that doorway. Right. And then as you go further down, there are like Sephiroth, but they're, I don't know, they're husks or whatever shells, I guess. But the, the um the anti sephiroth i guess are ruled by demons mm -hmm. each yep. one has a underworld. name right and well, it's, yeah I'll go tell ahead you go ahead 
Okay. No, it's well, okay. Um, I was just going to say that the when you get to the end, it's it's full separation. Like at the top of the tree of life, it's to it's to connect and commune and become one with the all of creation. You know, the light of creation, God, right? And the base of the tree of death, that uh, infernal triad, like the last one is full separation from creation. And then there's another step beyond that where you can begin your own, where you are the God. They believe that once they separate, they can create their own world underneath, just like Lucifer has done, I guess, in this world. Uh, so they believe that the dark is more powerful than the light because it was here first. Right. And so they give their allegiance to this decay, involution, the opposite of life and growth. And that's where they focus their power. And this and in the real world, these people, they invert everything that's good. We can see that everywhere. It's the mirrored opposite, yep. you know, like um, boys or girls now, you know, uh, you know, uh, righteousness is is wrong and you know ignorance is strength freedom is slavery you know what i mean like the say just like 1984 like it's a full on inversion where we believe 2 plus 2 is 5 um and then once they they can satanify the world if they make the world completely the inversion of the creation then they can own this place because yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I just tell tell like sometimes uh, professionals have well, let's just say all the time, pretty much, they do not have any clue of how to help survivors, and so that's why I have a really strong desire to start teaching. So that's what I do is I'm training people to understand. But it see for us as a survivor, there's it's more than what you said. It is so much more, and what they they build is so first they did that you have to have the first tree put in by two or three at the latest then they have you start creating these are spiritual dimensions and you start creating the next four trees and the cosmic tree and so by the time you're done with just the core foundation you have to have built went through all this torture and the spiritual learning and having demons believe me like hundreds and hundreds of fallen angels attached to you and so you've got when you're done you have to have created seven trees and four worlds, which is uh, Asaya. This is in Kabbalah. Um, it's uh, Yesra, Briya, and, and Azaluth. And if the survivor can make it to Azaluth, that's where Lucifer is. And Briya is the fallen angels. And then the uh, Nephilim is the Yetzirah. And then Asaya is the, the only one that's based in a physical form. The rest are all spiritual. So you're building, you have to build. What I mean by that is they're going to put you through this training that you have to build the spiritual evil. It's all connected to the planet systems. So what you have is this very, very deep spiritual kingdom of lucifer within and then this all ties into the second heaven and i didn't understand the importance of it but it is everything because you could be a survivor and let's say you did take out the whole core tree of death if they they have the backup in second heaven so they could recreate it so you have to be sure that that's another thing they do is they recreate things if you take it out and so you have to be sure that you always focus on that and so how i feel that i have been very successful in helping survivors is in helping them pull their mind back together and integrate their mind because so many survivors will talk about their integrate their parts running around and that's the most dangerous thing they could ever admit in public because anybody any uh cult member that hears somebody talking and they're saying my parts are running all over they're an open target so so that is a no-no you don't ever i don't care if you have a lot of parts you do not admit it publicly because mm -hmm. that will that's an open target that you are very accessible so 
if, if, if we as a whole do not start integrating and pulling our mind back together, then they will always be able to access us. I don't care if you have a thousand memories because so did I. I had a thousand memories and they were still able to access me. So, and I had done all this healing work after 20 years and they, because I had a, a few simple, well, not simple, but I had the core and that was the neural order programming. They called me right up. That's what they wanted. And then they, and then that all ties into the tree of death and all of that. I didn't even hear of that. I didn't even know I had demons attached to me at like hundreds of different levels of them, you know, different levels of demons, you know, some lower, some higher. Um, I didn't know about the Nephilim. I had no idea that has plays a big role with survivors. So I just want people to understand that it's so important. We understand that we're all the same. They did it the same to all of us. You know, and right now we all kind of just, that's what they created. They, they don't care if you have some memories because they know you're never going to get to the whole thing. They just, you know, they kind of know that you've got this puzzle and you've got that puzzle and you've got this puzzle, but you don't have the whole puzzle. And so that's my goal is I literally have worked with so many survivors and we're, we're moving this out and I have witnessed for myself. So I'm not telling you any crap. I, this is my total witness is I have seen these survivors because pulling out what I call the map. Uh, there's certain events that you have to pull out and those are called the stars of Satan and there are five of them somebody can earn and they they're they're done as an event a seven day event starting if you're 65 that's the fifth star and, and pretty much anybody that gets the fifth star won't be coming in for help but anyway so what what God showed me is if you will focus on just the core uh, events and the core altars, you can you can pull this out. And I have witnessed that with very high level program survivors that are the highest that you could be in the Illuminati Freemasons, um, Recreations, Knights Templar, whatever. But they all work together and the Druids. So they all are they all act as one and they all believe the same thing. And that's why we're in the world that we are, because they they want to follow Lucifer and they are being instructed by his his fallen angels how to right. how to destroy our world. And so we're just we're basically just a, a vessel. Survivors were a vessel that they could put in their their belief system and uh, carry it out for him. So. Uh... Have you heard of Russ Dizdar? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he wrote a book and he discusses the Black Awakening, what yeah. he calls the Black Awakening. Now, he's he was following the trail of this one piece of the cult called the Cult of the Black Flame, they called themselves. And there were altars, demonized altars, that told him they're creating an army for the Antichrist. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, so the, the black awakening is this, uh, is, is planned, uh, signal or whatnot that goes across the world and all of the sleepers wake up to that and then create chaos. Yeah. And the antichrist is going to use his power to fight off, you know, make them go away. And then all of us will be so happy that the Antichrist did this will put him on the on the throne. <laughs> yeah. And then that will prepare, then he will will gather all the armies of the world to fight Jesus when he comes back. Yeah. There's four armies that I know of that they've created. Okay. One is the survivors. Second one is clones. There's millions of clones that they have downloaded. They've just taken the essence from a survivor. And they download, okay, if you want to hear something wild, I can tell you what we have just found out is, so you know they're putting a lot of technology into survivors and other people. Well, anyway, the latest technology that I'm aware of, I'm sure there's much more, is they implant this technology, but it's a surgical implant. And then it reads the mood 
it it knows what you're thinking your your mannerisms everything and what they're doing is downloading that into they've already stolen your dna they've already made the clone now what they're doing is they're downloading the technology of stealing everything about the person into the clone and then what they want to do very soon not in the in the future soon is they want to get rid of the original and they're just going to have soulless an army so they're going to be soulless okay so that's number two army number three army is they've been creating a nephilim army using the survivor women who have the bloodline to have nephilim children so this is so they have millions of those then we have the last one that i know of is the military they have implanted them with technology to make them do whatever they want i've witnessed it myself so um so those are the four armies that i'm aware of but the survivors are already getting activated just to let you know right there the was new world order there was recently in colorado a man who went into he was in the bathroom of a uh it was like a park where they have tunnels and like into the into the earth or whatever and he he had weapons like lots of guns and he had bombs and fake bombs which is weird and he uh killed himself with a bullet to the head but he wrote on the mirror i don't want to hurt anybody i just mm -hmm. want to get in the tunnels and i i'm assuming that this person overcame his programming he was supposed to do another one of these you know a daily shooter events where you know like like what they do in the schools and you know I, all these people are programmed yeah. right yeah. i mean i we I understand that to be true. I mean, I'm sure you do too. Well, the one thing I don't, I would like to share, I have gotten um, severe. Okay. So this is the thing that I'm teaching, which is the tree of death, right? The, the complex programming. And I put it in a book too. And I, you know, tried to show people the best I could, how you take it out, the programming from A to Z, you follow the map. Well, from that moment on that I published it, my husband and I have had nothing but spiritual attacks from every high up uh, group that you can imagine for the last year. And it hasn't stopped. And, and even so. So anyway, I'm going to make a long story short. When I got when I got the book done, I started getting attacks and then something very weird started happening. I am having this huge amount of women come in that turn out to be mothers of darkness. So mothers of darkness are coming in like crazy. I'm like, there is no way in heck this is normal. So some were coming in for help, but some were just spies and they wanted to know what I was doing. And this, and then this, they were using them to activate this huge amount of cursing and the 13 mothers of darkness were cursing us and the druid. Oh my gosh. So I'm like, God, I don't want to know anymore. Do not send anybody else in there i do not want to know another thing but anyway he didn't listen and so for the last year he told me to write down every curse and to write down everything that i was learning from these women and then i had a couple of men their father of darkness and uh, one of them was able to share his information the best he could anyway and god just said i want you to publish this book and i'm like but i i, I don't feel like i have I have more that is publicly available to anyone and I wasn't going to, I really wasn't because I know I'm going to get all hell broke loose. But anyway, God said to do it. I, I, I'm hoping what this will do is will help other people be able to pull this information and publish it from what I'm sharing. But to God's directions, basically within two months, I'll have it done. Like I'm done. I just have to get it edited and all that. And it's about mothers of darkness. Yay. I, and so, you know, that's going to piss off a lot of people because every time I mention them, even in my podcast, you may even want to tear, put this out. I don't know. <laughs> they, they do come after you. They don't like it. But something scary. is happening. They activated them as a whole in the fall worldwide. This has never been done ever. And what they were told is that they were to go after any podcaster who was revealing the cabal to, to actually kill many people, but anybody that was helping survivors, any survivors that were trying to get free, uh, they, they put them on a hit list because see, they've been trained their whole life to be 
to wield evil that you do not understand. I did not know as a survivor, I didn't even know this evil existed until they started using it on me. So, um, you know, that's why I trying to warn people they've already been activated. They're, they're at a spiritual level and they are like, I have even, even in the last couple of weeks had some survivors get in touch with me that they're being contacted right now to go kill some people. So, so we have to understand the new world order is activated. It is, it is not the kin kinetic, but the spiritual stuff, people are get, being given orders. They're beginning, um, they're giving codes to start activating things that are not activated inside. So this is happening right now. And as we see the world, we need to understand if you're a survivor, you must do all you can to pray that God will not allow you to be activated because they're going to use you. This is what you were created for in their eyes. Right. So uh, what are the books that are out now that can help the survivors? While, while you mentioned them, let's talk about it and see where All we right. can. I'll just show you real quick. Okay. Is, um, this one is the uh, puzzle pieces together. I mean, puzzle pieces to the, uh, the Cabal, Mind Control, and Slavery. And this is a generic that would help people just understand the basic things of the tree of death. Uh, just, just, I think anybody can read this and get a lot out. I was surprised even survivors said they got triggered from this, but it's pretty, pretty, I, I do not go into like a, a lot of uh, gross stories. I don't do that. Right. So um, this is number two. This is a manual and this is shows puzzle pieces survivor. together. Puzzle pieces together is that one, right? Yes, and if Sorry. just for the is, listeners that aren't watching, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Thank you. Um, it's a map, and it, it basically is a manual, and it will show you from A to Z how to take out the programming that is the template of the, the seven trees, the four worlds, the five events, uh, and the very important events that you must take out, which is 19, 17, and three, uh, and then 13 months is very important, and birth. Um, and anyway, those are really important dates. So I, I explain all that. I give people tools to help you understand uh, how to help yourself because you can't do this by yourself unless you understand the tools. Um, you need, even if you were desperate and you had to have a friend help you, you could still do it. That's what I wrote it for because there's so few professionals to help. Um, so it is in a way, and so some people said it was still a little hard to understand. So in my third book, it's going to be Puzzle Pieces Together, Hidden Knowledge, and I am trying to explain it even better. So hopefully that will work. So. Fantastic. I mean, really, what I mean, what the, the dark occult, it is occult, right? And that's where their power is. And if you reveal... Yep. their occulted information then they have no power anymore that's why that's they're right. fighting you so much on the other side like with the spiritual attacks and yeah. we know the army has people that do remote viewing and you know uh like th and those people are probably connected you mentioned earlier about the clones mm -hmm. and i always wondered why madonna you know the singer whatever that she looks like a snake now. It's really weird. I know she but, looks horrible. <laughs> yeah. But uh, she has a team of people that follow her around and clean up her DNA. Did you oh, know? Oh, wow. Mm -mm. That makes me think that she's afraid that they're going to make a clone of her, get rid of her. You know, oh, that makes I'm sure sense. they already have. Right. Right. Why, why does she look like a snake? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. So, okay. So these stars of Satan, are events that are in the in the victim's life at certain stages of their mm -hmm. development i could tell you what they are if you want please okay the first one the first star is at 13 years old and the cult believes it is your coming of age year so that means to them which is complete crap is that you free will chose lucifer so the coming of age seven day ritual is very huge it's very traumatic uh and they say that you are you know you've been raped probably 13 times you've been drugged but then they say and you're in an altered state and then they say you're freely choosing lucifer so that's number 13 you get your first star and what that means is you are a slave first star to satan 
The next star is 13 years later. It's, it goes in 13 periods. And so the next one is 26. And that is where you become a queen. You become a wife to a Nephilim. And you become, um, you have to understand, this is going to blow some people away, but I think we just need to know it. Uh, a survivor will be married to many things uh, that is not including a human. Okay, so they're going to be married many times. Just like uh, how nuns are married to Jesus, right? Yeah, you're okay. gonna, you're, you will definitely be married to Lucifer, and not just once. But they, if you're a mother of darkness, you will be married at 19 to a. It'll be a huge. Well, everybody has a huge 19 year old ceremony, but it's very big to a mother of darkness. Um, she will have this very big ceremony to the uh, unholy trinity marriage. So, but that it's not the first one. Um, you're going to be married to a Nephilim. You're going to be married to a Druid, a Druid king of some sort or priest. So, and then there's other marriages that can take place. You can actually be married to these uh, demon god or goddesses. So, by the time you're done, you know, this woman said this one time, and it's true. By the time you have an earthly marriage, you, they consider your earthly marriage fornication because you've already been married. So that's why a lot of survivors crazy. have problems in their, their marriages or it's, their partners. Because it's crazy because that. they're made to be whores for the cult. I mean, they're used for money, sex, and yeah. But if they get married and have love, then that's wrong, right? And that's they don't allow it, first of all. There's wow. some women that have come to see me that they literally were programmed not to, they weren't allowed to have a partner. They were not allowed. It was a big fat no, no, no. Do you, who are they? They One of them was a queen mother of darkness. And they were not going to let her have a man in life. Oh, no. Mm -mm. This is just like the priestesses of Inanna. The of ancient Sumeria, there were the young girls were given to the cult at before they were while well, they were still virgins, and they were made to be nuns or whatever, and they were they were forced to lay with any man and to make, get money from each one. They would charge money from people just like the collection plate at Catholic church, right? Because the Catholics is the newer version of this ancient Sumeria, like the yeah. Inanna Ishtar, same like Catholicism is doing that. And so the, uh, the collection, these people would bring money and give it to the nun and the nun would remove their sins via their semen. Like when they ejaculate, there go yeah, their they sins. Yeah, they believe all that stuff. <laughs> and they think it's cleansing. Their, now, oh, mm -hmm. now I can go home and not have sin. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that's the job of the nun. And that's what, like in the movie Eyes Wide Shut, like that's what those women were doing. It's like the same Ishtar cult, you know. And it's interesting that they're not allowed. These women weren't allowed to uh, prefer to lay with only one man. Like they can't fall in love. They have to give it to everybody. <laughs> Which yeah. is interesting. It's uh, the, well, like the hate you know, love. There's one thing that you should check into and study. And I am not an expert, but I, what I've learned is the Druids have such a big hold on all humanity. And if you're a survivor, the Druids are connected to you. And they, it's, they're it's they tough to get free of. I'm not kidding. I, I didn't even know about them until the last. I mean, I knew about the Druids because I'd had experiences with them. But I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It wasn't like it wasn't more than anything else I dealt with, but it is. They have this. I would say, if I were to say this, that they have the greatest evil spiritual power that is wielded on this earth is the Druids. They're very, very secretive and they're very, it's considered sacred. You're not to share anything about them, but see, a, a Druid queen or a Druid priestess. Usually they're separate in the in the altar system, but they're usually going to also be a mother of darkness, possibly. Um, anyway, so I, I'm not saying it's everyone, but I, when you get to be a mother of darkness, you are going to have a druid something. Um, but what I'm finding is all survivors have something druid. So um, right. So do you I think that's why? Any help, huh? Do you think that's why they uh, glorify Halloween in America? Because America is like 
the great Satan, <laughs> you know? Uh, I don't know. I, I know that I believe very strongly because I have actually given some prayers from Amanda Buys to some of my friends that are not survivors. And they read the Druid prayer to release for themselves and they felt a shift and they're not survivors. That's why I think they have a hold on humanity. And I think that the Druids came from Egypt. They migrated up there to the British Isles after Egypt, I think. Um, that's what okay. I've learned anyway. So it's a continuation and Egypt is a continuation of the Babylon and the Samaria, you know, um, that, that type of magic. And the Kabbalah comes from the same place. And this is like the magicians believe this is how to, like it, it gives a map of how our soul came down into flesh. And this is the path up to become, uh, you know, one with creator again. Um, they, 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 I don't know if you've studied this part, but Nimrod is a, a real big role in all yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And unfortunately, it is also a. Do you know that Nimrod, the demon angel, is very big in every survivor? They're tied to Nimrod, Apollyon, and a and a demon Michael. And this is huge in a survivor. Huge, and they 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 um do the system at every age with them. And what happens is these demons download a greater level of evil at these different ages. So they'll start, some of it is started in, in the womb, but then they'll do birth 13 months and then they'll go to three and then 13. And then um, they'll just go through all the ages, like all the stars. They keep downloading this huge amount of evil and knowledge is what really they're doing. Of Lucifer's kingdom right so this so like we said earlier each uh, stage on the tree of death down uh, is ruled by different demons and each one of those like the like John D's um, uh, you know uh, angelic like the the whole 72 demons that he did what is it the, the um, God I forget Anyway, he did, he mapped out these 72 demons that were supposedly the ones that helped Solomon build the temple. And okay. so like, um, and you can find like this demon has this many legion of other oh. demons under its control. It, who's that now? I'll have to look that well, up. John D that. was, uh, was John the D. necromancer of Queen Elizabeth the first and he wrote, Oh, Goetia. G O E T I A. Goetia is his like grimoire okay. or whatever. And yes. um, and that maps out certain demons and um and the tree of death also has a map of demons on and they're placed in different uh spaces on like different husks or anti sephiroth on this tree. And so when you get like I'm I'm thinking that when uh the victim gets to a certain age it's pu pushed further down the tree to the next stage level where the another demon will be invoked into their consciousness or in their body with them uh that's i mean the major magic that they do is invocation and uh like that's the demons want flesh they want to be able to feel and you know but they're not allowed <laughs> they, they right. don't have the, but they can't come into flesh like we are incarnated um so this is the this is the whole scheme they want to take over our flesh and you know we see les wexner says that he has a dib book like he says it in a magazine in an interview like the dib book is like a jewish demon which he works with and it, t it tells him things and yeah that, you know. these people give up their souls to get that information like right. they want to have information by these demons, but it, it's at a cost. It's at right. a huge cost. Well, the cost, they, I mean, I'm assuming the cost is they have to lose their humanity to make space yeah. for these demons, right? Because uh, really like the main focus of Satanism, it seems like, well, you know, not, not Levain Satanism, but the uh, like 
anti-humanity satanism that whole idea of the the philosophy of anti-creation they uh it's it i always attack morality and love right mm -hmm. so the morality is it uh it creates the space for the love and it and the morality um knits together people it creates more intricate like it, it's a it's a creation force brings things together um and they are working on the other polarity with with division and uh separation so they it seems as though they attack morality in any chance they can and then if they can invert us so like i've spoke with another gentleman uh john euler who's a, a professional counselor licensed and he works with sex offenders and sra victims and he sees from both sides like what's going on with psychopathy and he he teaches us that the it, psychopathy is a scale and no one ever starts just wanting to have sex with children it doesn't work like that there's no like minor attracted people are not born that way right it's a stepwise progression into psychopathy and it it has to be you know it starts at one end and like oh you know the teenage kid will look at an adult woman and you know masturbate or whatever and then it goes further and it, and then it's like the we can see in pornography sites or whatever they try to devolve our morality and they try and each time you're getting a reward of dopamine but you're negating your morality when you're watching this video of a woman get abused you know and mm -hmm. so like it's it the uh they're st they're taking all of society it's it's an attack on all of our morality so that th this is what allows for the demons to uh influence us i guess because with Jerry Marzinski, he talked about what the schizophrenics deal with and the voices in their heads mm -hmm. and these these things. They he describes it like they're checking into a job, like they punch a clock and they're they're there to bother this dude for you know and suck his energy. And they're mm -hmm. all they talk about how they're worried about being sent to the pit, whatever that is. Like they they have to follow instructions. They don't have free will, and their job is to torment these people and uh they they have access to the person's memory and they can find anything that that like anything that you're ashamed of or anything that like you have guilt and they use that to make you focus on that make put you in depression and then they can you know drain your louche or whatnot right so if we're all doing immoral things that gives tools to the demons to work against us in our own yeah. heads it's um yeah so that's the warfare really i mean it's like all of society is being attacked um you know i i talk about a lot in my work uh like circumcision is a total attack on all the males and their brains and their spirit and it removes their ability to feel like um and it's attack on the 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 bond of the child with the mother and if we look at all these type of activities there it's always an attack on bonding families mm -hmm. love yeah. and morality um can you speak to that do you agree to that well i mean one of the things that they spend a lot of time in the mind control programming uh, of a survivor is to hate jesus so that will begin immediately and the worst worst one will happen at 13 months old and what they do is so the child has already been split the mind has already been split in the womb so what happens at 13 months old it's a complete setup and this is why it's an important event in a survivor what they do is they take um the the child they say okay do you want to feel whole do you want to feel loved all this stuff and of course the child does so they say okay so you want jesus to come help you because they know jesus will show up so jesus does show up makes them whole for the first time in their, you know, since they've been created at conception, they're whole. 
they feel Jesus love, whatever they feel. It's a wonderful experience. And then immediately afterwards, they do a three-way rape. And they say, see, Jesus didn't come help you. He didn't protect you. He didn't do this. You know, we're the only family you have. We're the only ones that will take care of you, blah, blah, blah. So the child, again, splits in the three ways. And, uh, you know, that's where Michael, uh, Nimrod, and, and Apollyon are downloaded in this, these three different splits. And so, anyway, download a lot of evil. But, but what happens is they use this 13-month-old experience to, to continue to program the person. And they'll bring it again up in a huge way at 13. And so it's teaching the person to hate themselves because they went to Jesus and to hate Jesus because he didn't he didn't protect them. So see they, they 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 are always in every ritual, every event that they're programming you, they're programming you to hate Jesus. So I always tell people, well, if Jesus doesn't have any power, why do they even give a dang and why are they t teaching survivors not to go to him ever? Like they've even burnt they'll burn the hand of a 3-year-old to never touch the Bible. So what if if it has no power, why are they wasting so much time on it? So that's what I, you know, I, I need people to understand is they're scared of him. And right. the thing is, is he's the only one that can, that can destroy the demons, the fallen angels. And uh, he's the only one that has power over all of them. And they know that. And that's why they must make sure a survivor won't go to Jesus. And a lot of them don't and won't because of that. So uh, Jesus, it, it's like, from what I understand, the way that the demons work is it's like a legal system, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus is like our advocate yep. <laughs> if we ask for it, if we yeah. ask for his help and, and we're willing. Uh, but they, can you talk about that, please? About, about how it seems like how we can relate it to a legal system. And that's, it'd be easy yeah. for us to understand. That's actually a great thing that, that I do. And one of my modalities that I use is going to the courts of heaven and what the courts. So let's say that you came in to see me and we said, okay, we're going to find out all this information on the 13 month old. Cause we have to heal the 13 month old. So we get all the information and then, and then, okay, we're going to the courts of heaven because we have to get rid of demons. Uh, I can't get rid of them. Jesus can. So we go into the courts of heaven and God, the father is the judge. And then Jesus Christ is what we call the advocate for you. And he's your, he's your lawyer. And so what he's going to do, he's going to stand up and fight for you. And then once we share in the court case, what they have done and the demons uh, hold that they legally have on that person, because the demons have to follow the, the legal uh, law of free will. So they are bound by free will. They know how to get around it. So what we're doing is we're getting rid of their legal rights. So we tell the Lord everything. He we, Then we have to go through a repentance process. We just say, you know, whatever our ancestors did, whatever I did, we repent. That opens the door for Jesus. And then he heals the little all the little parts of a survivor very quickly. He takes all their pain. He heals them immediately. And, and then he gets rid of the demons and he removes the programming. So that's why courts of heaven, we want Jesus on our side. Like he can heal us so quickly, like so quick, you guys. I've never seen something that would heal. I mean, I've seen so many miracles. And when I say people are pulling their minds together, I mean it. I'm serious. And I want to ask you, how many professionals can say that? Or that are saying that they see their, their clients pull their mind back together? Right. And are truly whole. A lot of them say it never comes together all the way. They just have to deal and live. Right. Most ther licensed therapists think you cannot you cannot be uh, healed from DID. It's a big fat lie. But, just want you to know. But with this uh, the analogy, I guess, of a tree or literal depiction of the tree in the, you know, uh, in the mind's eye, that that's the root. You know, if you cut off the limbs it'll it's still there it's still yep. alive and can grow but this is like removing the roots out. yes and that's what the lord said he said if you just focus on the core in the core altars because you'll have thousands you could have close to a thousand altars in a survivor so there's no way you can heal all of them but you know what they all heal 
in this process because you're focusing on the core and they start to pull them themselves together and then the higher up altars of course take a little time but it's just talking about you know they have to understand who lucifer really is because they think lucifer is jesus in the way of being so great so it's, you do have to come across you know work with that yeah, a while <laughs> i know it, it's interesting though i mean even if you think logically like I mean, like Jesus is the way, the truth and the life and, you know, it's the light of the world and like all these ideas. And then you think, what does Lucifer mean? And light bearer, like, and that's the sun, right? And then the Jesus, they put the, the Jesus uh, story on the Apollo, Apollo cult, basically the sun cult and in all the iconography he's got a halo of the sun and he you know he's got his 12 apostles like the 12 uh, uh you know signs of the zodiac and all this so th there is a lot of relation where you'd think logically well jesus is the light of the world isn't that what lucifer is and you you know you go to roman catholic churches and they're singing in latin and they talk about lucifer lucifer and like, yay they love him and i'm like oh yeah that's jesus right <laughs> so it's, uh, it's not that i don't like, think it's me. jesus but yes. anyway i don't know yeah. so like so they in in a way that they they are um they're inverting jesus himself right oh they're yeah take, they're inverting that uh that idea as well well, to uh, if if you were to talk to a loyal cult altar, which every survivor has many, if you talk to them, they believe that Lucifer is kind. He's Jesus. He's the only one. They'll do anything for his love, but to be loved by Lucifer, you have to be hurt, and that's what I try to teach them. Is you, you know you don't have to be hurt anymore to be loved. Jesus, the real Jesus does not work that way. Right. And so, so how a lot of integration takes place is when they finally get it, that who Jesus is and who Lucifer is. And then I do this thing that I won't share here, but I, I help them to see who Lucifer really is. Because if they pull off the illusions off their eyes, they will see who he is and what he looks like. And it is not the illusion on their eyes. Because, see, they have illusions that demons are their friends, that they look a certain way. But if you pull the illusion off of them, they're scary as heck. And that's right. who, that's what they have to see to, right. to help them to stop being loyal. So. so, in a sense, you're bringing the truth to all the parts. That yes. it's, it's not Lucifer like you think. It's Satan. You know, like the opposer of yeah. creation. And by bringing that truth to all these pieces, then all the parts are able to choose willingly with their free will yes. to reintegrate into yes. the whole. Yes, you maze. never make them. Right. You never make an altar integrate. You they It has to be their choice. So just to let you know that it has to be their choice. Right, and a lot of them will integrate very easily. I'm not kidding. A lot will, but the the leaders, the higher up ones, some of them seriously will not even come near integrating like a mother of darkness until you have pretty much removed every little piece. And I'm not kidding; they they won't do it. They will hold on till the last minute because you have to understand the father and mother of darkness are Lucifer's Adam and Eve. Right. And so they literally talk to Lucifer and are his right hand man. So they are loyal as loyal could be. And they will absolutely not integrate till you are almost at the very, very end. And maybe at the very end, but it won't be before. Right. So, so the Mothers of Darkness is a specific piece of the overall cult where they um, they choose what role each they don't baby, choose they okay tell me <laughs> unfortunately no they do not it is okay. a family thing it is passed down to them before conception they have already been ordained to be a mother of darkness oh no i mean i what i meant is their role oh. in the cult once they're an acting mother of darkness oh once yeah they they see each baby and they're like this one is going to do this in the cult this one is going to do that yeah. they ordain the jobs Right. They actually do that with every single survivor. And you know why they can do it? 
because they're being instructed by the fallen angels of who this person is because the fallen angel knows who the person is. Wow. And so that what they do is they say, okay, this person can do this, this, and this, and this is how they could hurt us, you know, could come against Lucifer. So then they will do a lot of programming to make sure that person can't use their gifts in a certain way, but then use them for Lucifer. So yeah, they use that for every single survivor. Wow. But uh, uh, if you, ha if you're a high groomed, survivor you have already been picked before conception and they it's your your mother and your grandmother and your great grandmother they're all mothers of darkness and the children if they're you know women they're going to be mothers of darkness too it could be a family of three or four women but what they usually do is they groom them all but only one usually they know is gonna maybe make it they there's millions of them but, but you have to understand is very few will ever truly take on the role. It doesn't mean they're not groomed and they can't wield and like horrible evil because they can. But to be a true blue uh, foundational uh, mother of darkness, they have to do one thing. They have to be with their own free will, choose Lucifer. They cannot be in an altered state. They have to, and do you know how they get them to do that? Is they want them, they want some, they have to kill somebody with their own free will being awake. They can't be under mind control. And once they have chosen Lucifer, it's all over. Like they, they've got them. Right. But very few, even after all the grooming they get, uh, very few will choose them with their own free will. Interesting. So, yeah, that is another aspect of this, like, this reality is a free will realm. We, yes. uh, we must choose to accept what evils they do to us. That's why all the programming, that's why they do the, uh, they call it um, uh, revelation of the method or whatever, they, where they'll show us 9-11 before it ever happens like in the simpsons and on the super tramp album and these type of things and this uh occulted revelation they believe absol uh, uh takes away any kind of guilt uh um uh their liability karmic karmically where they that way it um yeah they can't even do it chose. actually did you know that they actually can't do anything without free will and choice? They have to have an acceptance. That's right. why babies aren't going to say, yes, you can hurt me. That's why their mother, their father, their grandparents, somebody in the cult has to say yes to the mm. demon. I, uh, I've learned that where they do torture in utero to babies that they're going to be using as SRA, uh, all, yes. like slaves and they'll be looking at the monitor at the baby resisting this probe that's like electrocuting them or whatever and then it finally relaxes and then that's the moment where the baby they consider that to be consent <laughs> because the the baby's not fighting anymore and that's like what yeah i mean they yeah they tried all the loopholes they can possibly get there's <laughs> right. no doubt about it it's so sick dude it's so so really, uh, that's why the jab that we had to deal with was two. You do one, and then you get to choose really, oh, did I really like that? Oh, I don't know. With all the programming that they gave us and the news and all that, you know, some people went back for more. Eric Clapton lost the use of his hand, and his hands don't work anymore, and he went and got a second one. It's like... Is that so dumb? Uh, I, I, it, I but know. it proves I, how powerful their mind control is. Like yeah. they have us. Like they they do, and they're they're experts at mind control. So it's right. not. That's why people, I hope, understand that it is so organized, and they know what they're doing. They know, like, if you're you know programming a you know survivor, they know at a certain age that child can can learn a certain thing, can handle a certain thing, and you can only take them so far. They know every little piece like that. Right. So so none of this is by chance. None of it, I don't care. I even tell people, I don't care if you live in a small town, you are still getting the same programming. They have to have you programmed the same way because you don't know it. Like this, this person lived in a town of 700, and yet she was a queen, okay? Right. Queen Mother of Darkness. And they had her with the president. They had her with uh, this one senator who actually, he was her slave owner. 
and um so but she came from a very small town so it doesn't it doesn't matter right right so the i mean the 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 levels of uh hierarchy are different for them they have you know their spiritual hierarchy in the bloodline and they can hide these bloodlines in all different walks of life you know and mm -hmm. we can also see from the regular church of satan those people that you know choose to be psychopaths and choose to uh live for themselves and the ego and the, you know um social darwinism and such it's a philosophy for that but even there they 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 uh they put people in places of power in all levels like the mm -hmm. you'll have church of satan in the you know the pta parent teachers association at the, the church local of Satan library is really not who we're dealing with no i get that yes but they are well they uh they're another piece of the wider cult right so they're like public relations um, okay so in a way like uh it's gathering workers for the lower end people that will agree to the evil you know it, um, from amongst the society gather this gathers them up and picks them it's a psych a lot they do psychological tests on all the members and okay. they uh like um, i know personally uh ex-members that talk about it and it's you know so but they they anton levey was is a jewish guy changed his name and was given the job to write that book he was like uh there were others just like karl marx was like was told okay write this book now you know he works for somebody else and this is a way of uh bringing the the satanic mindset to the people same as like what television does and what movies do yeah, it's another true. form of like propagating the message of anti spirit you know uh that type of thing and where they use and they they cling to like atheism and like Anne Rand and atheism like together, you know, like, and so people that, that are atheists like myself, I, I was following that ideology when I was young, like before, and, you know, when I was in high school and stuff, I was, and, uh, because it logically makes sense, you know, like, Oh, this is why, and Oh, we're just animals. And Oh, you know, love is just chemicals in your brain. You know, I was very, but I mean, I was circumcised. My dad was an alcoholic. I had like a bad life anyway. It just so happened. So that's what's like, that's what the church of Satan does. Gathers the people that have had those bad lives and okay. would rather choose, uh, you know, ego and um, immorality, you know, because there is nothing. And that, you know, it's like nihilism for the world. And yeah. uh, that's kind of what, in the way that I've learned, that's what it's to, but the higher cult works with them. They, so the yes, church he, of Satan okay. members will wear the robes and go to the, uh, they'll go to these mastermind sessions where, you know, um, uh, my friend of mine, Mark Passio, uh, he went to, uh, rituals where they, they wanted to get some certain law passed, or whatever and they would get together in a ritual and they would all believe they would all think together about how it's already passed and it will it is done already and they would just so they yeah, would bring they all the of the demons to help yeah yeah and mark was even talking about how he would construct these things out of mirrors to like to aid in the ritual and so it's not just atheism mm -hmm. they still work with the higher orders but they're like worker bees that help okay with the larger uh workings you know what i mean so like his certain cult like he was there in pennsylvania and Anna, alan greenspan was like there he takes the robe off and like oh yeah there's the, the guy from the fed you know and working together with the the mark was like a metal singer you know he's singing heavy metal music satanic stuff but they're all together doing the workings you know um so mark wasn't privy to the killing of babies and the you know the blackmail and the, that type of shit stuff but um it's still a lower order of the larger yeah. cult it's like I mean, a it's hierarchical like system yes yes the freemasons yeah. the porch masons or whatever got the first three levels and they you know oh, i'm a master mason oh you got the three right and then you got the scottish right 
where uh uh the the guy that wrote the book there um albert pike that dude mm -hmm. in his book morals and dogma says lucifer is the top that's what yeah. we worship and everything in freemasonry is based on kabbalah and he says mm -hmm. it right there in the book right yeah. there and everybody that joins that that gets to you know the levels of scottish right they get this book you know when they go to the fourth degree they're graduating from the master well, to the you next know, the level. thing that that most freemasons don't understand is uh just because i have worked with some people who have come in to see me who did not want to have anything to do with it they went to a meeting and they would not leave them alone they downloaded demons to them just for one meeting so you if you put yourself in that they have downloaded demons to you i don't care if you think it's great because everyone in the below the lower ones think it's great but they're not going to let you leave and that's that's the bottom line i don't care if you're number three at three level they're not going right. to let you go well, those are the worker bees too. You know, they're yeah. all doing the will of their, you know, the widow's sons and stuff. They're all cops yeah. and like whatever. But um, it's funny because the they they don't recruit. That's not how they work. You have to go and knock on the door. So that's yeah. a free will choice. Yeah. So if you go and knock on the door, then they're like, oh, come on in. We got you, you know? Yeah. So like, I know a lot of people that are friends of mine that are like learning esoteric knowledge and they're like, you know, the core of the Freemasonry uses symbolism that is, uh, you know, logically good. You know, they're trying to attain care and righteousness to become a better man, all these things that's you know that's that's how they catch you that's like the fly trap right yeah but so they're all like oh maybe i should join i'm like no <laughs> no don't join yeah. you can learn it all you yourself go, with free will won't. right tell me about I mean, that my how friend they... who was trained like brutally by the freemasons um he was very high up as far as a survivor and he he said anybody past 20 they know it's it's satan they know even though people say it's 32 and 33 he said no it's 20. so but i also have had somebody like she professed her husband was a christian and he was a 33 mason and i said no he's not a christian and she said yeah like he's a christian i'm like no no at 33 they're not christians right. and uh they wouldn't let them go she was trying to get help and they had downloaded so many demons so many things to control their life like it was really horrible. So right. um, that's, yeah, they, that's so, what happens. And the way the Masons work is the stepwise progression into the, yeah. just like Scientology, you know, you go level levels and yeah, that's, you know, that's at, how the programmers do too. Yes. That's how cults work, right? You can't just jump right into, Oh, Xenu dropped a bunch of souls into volcano, you know, <laughs> like whatever the Scientologists right. believe, like same thing free uh, the Mormons, you know, like the crazy stuff at the top is reserved for just the few that are so indoctrinated. It'll be okay for them to know that like the mormons think oh like yeah the reason you have so many wives is because you got to make star babies and populate the planets and you know it's well, actually, not not really christian true, but well like whatever that. like I, <laughs> how i understand how i've learned is that they you know they this was jesus's planet and like you know the, once you graduate to the stars you have to populate your own planet with your babies and all, all your wives are all slaves to making babies in the afterlife and anyway but anyway so because that, that's not mormon belief i don't know if you knew that but that's not mormon. well yeah that uh maybe i got it confused but maybe you have it confused i don't think so because that's not mormon belief for sure okay well anyway but they as far as the 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 queens of darkness they are so indoctrinated that they can they can will it they do willingly choose lucifer after all the satan after all these years of of choosing the evil like it's it's a stepwise progression to get there right it is but very few choose it like i've had several people come in but they don't want to have anything to do with it but they can't seem to stop it because that altar in them is so powerful uh to do lucifer's will but see they they are someone that will never be a full-fledged queen mother darkness or mother of darkness because their core self says no to lucifer 
So if the core self doesn't say yes, they can't be. So that's the true power that we have, all of us. Yep. Is to say no. It, that's right. <laughs> to say no is right. Awesome. When it comes to Lucifer, yes. Right. And that's the same with the government, with, you know, all the, the mind control. Like when Scientology says, give us a bunch of money so that you can be a OT5 or whatever, you can say no. And they can say, what are they going to do? You know, they 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 have it's a free will universe. Yep. Uh, we need to uh, comply. And our lack of saying no, if we don't say no, they take that as a yes. Right. Yep, absolutely. If we say nothing, it's a yes. So right. it doesn't matter if you want to get involved or not. If you say if you say nothing, you're involved. Have you heard the story about the fence? Please tell me. It's just a, it's just kind of a cute little story is so all these families, Lucifer's, you know, pulling to his side and there was a family that just sat on the fence and he said, well, are you coming to my side or what's happening? You know, he offered him all these rewards and all these things. And they said, well, we're not sure we're thinking about it. He said, take all the time you need because I own the fence too. So that's what we're up against. Even if you wow. don't make the decision, it, it'll be made for you. Right. So we do have to pick a side. Right. So in this time right now, we do have to pick a side right. of who we're going to be on because it's, it's that time. Right. So um, I'm not sure how much longer I have you. We didn't, I didn't ask ahead of time, so I don't want uh, to keep you from your, what you but have we're going out the country today on a vacation. Oh, so I am so excited to leave. <laughs> okay, good. Well, we'll <laughs> wrap it up here then. I would love to continue this further um, if you would so choose, because sure. there are many aspects of your knowledge that we I would love to unravel on the show and sure. uh, the very the You've given us a lot like uh, Asaya, Yasura, Bar like I've never heard of this before. And it's they great. are Kabbalah, but yes. they're inverted, of course. So right. um, have you heard of Amanda Buys? Uh, no. Can you spell that? B-U-Y-S on, and you can go to Canaan, and I believe it's K-A-N-A-A-N Ministries. Dot org and she has like 900 free prayers that you can read but what the prayers are are very specific details about a certain subject and you may even want to read the druids for you and your family right. and see if you feel any shift or change um she, she does have <laughs> yeah, my name is mccann i am an irishman right? <laughs> okay so it, yeah, you yeah. could have it and yeah. you know a lot of people don't even know that they're they have freemason in their family line if you look down the generations i know for america is in the 1700s i believe 1800s i believe a lot of people were just joining the freemasons because they thought it was kind of a cool thing i don't know how evil it was at that time mm. so there really are a lot of freemasons in right. our family line but not necessarily does it mean that that they did anything evil with it right so just uh it's, it's worth yeah, checking my, in to my family to see is from the same area as albert pike in massachusetts okay. like we're, so, <laughs> um so like it, the the local graveyards have like i mean my grandmother kept like 13 generations of oh. like her her line in america is like scotch irish like and my dad family came from the uh the famine that england imposed so okay. like i've got all this you probably irish. got some stuff Right. And well, maybe. And the, um, like Albert Pike is from the town where I like, I'll go to the graveyard and I'll find a bunch of Harris and Haskell and like the, my, oh, my wow. family. And, uh, and I've got this family tree my mom made for me where it like documents, she did a lot of work and oh, nice. I would love to learn more. <laughs> but Do you know what, the, how I can yeah. tell you a quick way to figure out if you have this in your, in your life, it's so easy. You can muscle test. Uh, you, if you don't feel comfortable muscle testing, you can have somebody else muscle test. That's the quickest way. And you just ask questions because mm. your unconscious already knows if you are, like if you have Druid or mm. Freemasons, you just keep asking, do I have this in my family line? Do I have this in my family line? And just go through the list of whatever you want to know. And your <laughs> muscle testing will tell you. Well, I do know that I had in 
very huge birth trauma. Okay. And uh, I was dead. I had the cord around my neck three times and there was lots of blood and they kept me for days. I don't know what they did to me. Uh, I guess I had a thermometer in my brain. They circumcised me. Uh, oh my gosh. It, like traumatize you more. Yeah. And so I know that that is something that I have to deal with in my life. I will, and I will tell you a way that you can heal that. Okay. And it will, you'll have to go back to the birth and you'll have to heal it. And how I help people do it is with tapping, not EFT. I just do tapping. Uh, it's called skills to change. It's an easier way to tap, but anyway, I could help you if you want some time to, to work with your birth, just your birth, because I promise you, it affects a lot of your life, uh, what they did. I worked so many clients that their birth is horribly traumatic, and they it affects everything in their life. So you got to God bless you it. for saying that. Thank you for offering. It's it's amazing. <laughs> yep. Wow, you're amazing. I, I, well, I will definitely keep in touch with you, and I'm so okay. glad that we have made this connection here today. And it's, it's nice I'm to meet you. infinitely grateful to meet you as well. Thank you. Thanks so uh, much for having me. Awesome. Take care. So people can find you at laurajwarley.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And just to let you guys know, I have two things coming up in, uh, let's see, June 18th and 20th. I'm starting an eight week course for professionals who want to help SRA and MK ultra survivors. I'm teaching you how to remove the tree of death programming and just a whole bunch of information. And then number two is in August 2nd, 3rd and 4th is going to be for survivors only uh, or people public that wants to learn. And, and it's a three day course online. Um, and then we're going to, I'm just going to teach you a bunch about it. Wonderful. Yeah. That's, so that's can, great. I will make sure to put links. Uh, those links can be found at laurajwarley.com. Yep. Wonderful. And uh, do you ha do you have any other, like a YouTube or anything where people can find? Uh, I do a podcast on Monday nights. You do? Uh, live. Uh, so you can go to Puzzle Pieces Together. I'm not going to be doing it for a couple of weeks because I'm going to be gone, but um, it's Puzzle Pieces Together podcast. And it's, I'm just trying to bring in information for to help survivors. Um, Wonderful. I do like to bring in people that are giving solutions to healing. So I do that a lot too, because I'm very passionate about that. So that's, that's wonderful. That's what you I do. Do. So we talk, whatever <laughs> you're doing, the you're doing real work in the world. I'm so glad that you're here and you're, you're a light for good. And your care is what pushes you and what you're doing in the world. We're so glad to have you uh, with us here in this realm. Well, uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. My, uh, my stubborn spirit does push me quite far. So, uh, <laughs> Well, it, we're thankful for it, and God bless you. <laughs> Thanks and a lot. Thank you, Take listeners, care. and thank you, Laura, for joining us, and we will see you next time on Wake Thank you. Thanks.